Without further ado, will you please welcome our speakers tonight on why Sheffield is the home of football, John Stocks and Steve Wood. Right, well, what a fantastic turnout for a horrible night in January. It's wonderful to see so many people here. You're sitting in um, George Barker's new ground here, which was um, when the Cross Sives used to nudge against the road over there. Um, this was a cricket ground. The, the pub ended round about there, so the boundary will be just about there. It went on past the car park and so on. For a time it was also the headquarters of the Norton Football Club who played most of their games at Oaks Park up in Norton. But there would have been football played on this spot almost certainly in the 1860s and 70s along with a lot of, a lot of cricket. So we're here to talk about um, why Sheffield is the home of football. And I'm sure that most of the people here will know something about the story. But we're hoping to expand your horizons a little beyond the tales of um, Sheffield FC, the FIFA recognised oldest club in the world, and tales of Han at Sandygate, the oldest ground, Bramall Lane, the oldest multi-purpose professional sports ground in the world. Because we're going to be looking at the whole of Sheffield football culture. So Sheffield really is the home of football. It's the beating heart of football, the first, the first city of football in the world. And between 1857 and 1875, there was no city in the world to compare to Sheffield in terms of the amount of football being played, the competitive nature of football, um, the number of teams, the number of grounds. It really is... Um, something remarkable. We're very excited to share the research that Steve and myself has been do doing. Steve has made some incredible strides on discovering long lost, um, half forgotten Sheffield teams and I'm sure that's going to expand your knowledge of that section um, immeasurably. You will be amazed how many teams have been just simply forgotten and uh, the, we have now rediscovered. Um, we're also going to be looking at some, some forgotten stories from Sheffield football history, or if not forgotten, um, they have been sidelined or downplayed. So we'll be looking at things like the, the story of Jack Hunter, the first working class captain of England. Um, a remarkable, remarkable story. The leader, of a, the leader of a football revolution and the great Billy Mosforth the first working class um, England footballer. So, um, we're going to start by considering um, who invented football? Would you like to give me some suggestions? Chinese, Aztecs. <laughs> very, yeah, two very, very good answers. Excellent <coughs> answers. Um, no worries. Um, the, um, the picture there shows the cricket club playing in Darwin in the 1820s. This is um, because football came in Sheffield and everywhere, even in Glasgow. Um, there are an astonishing number of football teams that came from cricket teams, even in Scotland. In Sheffield, the story of football is, is very much linked to the story and the history of cricket. Okay, so... Great answer, um, and as you can see in the top corner, basically they were play, playing Premier League football in China, you know, in the Han Dynasty, you know, the beginning of time. You can see they're in, they're in uh, football kit. They've got, okay, it's not like a, the, the goal we see today, but it's virtually identical. Um, they've got a very stressed looking goalkeeper, although if you look closely, it could be somebody who needs to go to the toilet actually, rather than a goalkeeper. Um, so, um, yeah, and the Aztecs, you know, there's, there's a strong claim that they invented football. Um, I'm inclined to see that as um, a little bit of uh, poetic license, possibly. Um, so, 3,000 years ago, football started in China, Aztecs, Greece, Romans. Really? I don't believe that for a minute. Football, football was 
at the beginning, in the beginning there was football. Um, footballers were as common as the poor. Every single country in the world has got a story about people playing a game, I was going to say playing with their balls, but um, a game based on, based on kicking a ball or catching a ball. And um, 3,000 years ago, what would the ball be made of? Um, this Chinese ball, I believe, was stuffed with hair, Steve. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, anything really. Anything yeah, yeah. As as you could kick the ball. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, a, a rag yeah. Stuffed, yeah. Yeah. stuffed with hair. So, um, a passing, uh, a sophisticated Barcelona style passing game, I suspect, would have been a little bit tricky. Yeah. So, if we had a toddler in here, I did this an experiment in, in Norway recently and it, and it worked. Um, you get a toddler. And um, as soon as they start toddling and walking, they're going to do one of two things with that. They're going to either walk up to it and do that. So we've got football, and, uh, or they're going to walk up to it if they can, and they're going to pick it up and probably start eating it. So um, that's pretty much rugby, isn't it? So every, uh, every country um, in the world, every toddler in the world, is going to have a, a pretty similar sort of routine. Um, the second um, point there, 12th century folk football being played with villagers. I can see the 4-4-2 formation uh, coming around here. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. And uh, they're, playing, they're playing it all in the middle, you know, they're crowding a little bit in the middle there. But there's the beginnings of tactical formation there. Um, yeah, and uh, actually this is a little bit more relevant. So if we accept the idea that anybody inventing football or inventing anything resembling the modern football game is, is nonsense. There is something relevant in terms of folk football because um, these villages um, close to Sheffield, Ashbourne, even Derby where the Derby game was even bigger than the Ashbourne game at one time, but there was an intense love of football and ball games, all different types of folk football. It wasn't all mob football which was you know, the Ashbourne game is more like hook ball, isn't it? Because all you do is try and stop somebody getting the ball off you and you move around. So it's, it's a totally different game um, to modern football. But um, th the people that came, the social migration patterns into Sheffield were people flooding in from the Derbyshire countryside, flooding in from the areas around Penistone, Fergal and North Sheffield. And all these people brought with them a love for playing ball games and they wanted to continue to play when they got to the city. Sheffield expanded enormously from being pretty much just a village to a, um, you know, a mega great steel city and most of the people came in from the countryside and they brought with them rural traditions and rural games. Number three, in the early 1800s public schools and universities developed the game, okay? Developed football. This is what the public schools are more aggressively telling us these days um, they're taking all the credit for the history of football, um, except the public school game was elitist, it was a long way from being the people's game, and we'll talk later about how Sheffield really invented the people's game, how Sheffield made the game a game that was a working class, a sport of the ordinary man and the ordinary woman, thankfully now. Um, so the public school game was based on dribbling. So, you know, what they did, they got a football, they dribbled the football, and, um, and then somebody came behind them backing up, okay? And when they lost the ball to a tackle, the next person would take it on. And they persisted this game, with this game, um, for, you know, for a long time. And even comprehensive thrashings by Sheffield, when Sheffield's um, association team went down and played against the public schools in the 1870s, um, they didn't stop playing the, the kind of dribbling game. Um, whereas Sheffield, you know, was, was thinking much more strategically. So, modern football is nothing like the game that was played at Eton and Harrow. And certainly not the game that was played at rugby school, because that was totally different. Rugby's a bit more like that. But really it was more like, um, if you think about trying to play rugby on the ground. So it was the same strategic manoeuvres, but it was people taking, taking the ball forward individually. 